let's go ahead and move these muscles back and we're gonna go ahead and remove the chest plate. Now, as I do that, you can actually see that we've cut the sternum. So you can see inside of that manubrium. But let's go ahead and scoot that out of the way. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the internal organs inside of your thoracic cavity. Let's do this. Let's start by defining what the thorax actually is so we're all on the exact same page. And it's essentially your chest. Although that's not the perfect description because the thorax also includes your upper back, which is obviously not your chest. And then the clavicle and scapula are gonna be like on top of the thorax, but they're not really part of the thorax because they're part of the upper limb. It, it can get kind of confusing. So let's just go ahead and say that your thorax or thoracic region is gonna be the area between your neck and your abdomen. It includes the ribs or the rib cage. And you can see some of those right here throughout all this muscular tissue. And you can even see a, two of them are torn here. And I do say torn on purpose and not broken because you're not looking at broken bone. Instead, you're looking at cartilage. This is called the costocartilage. And it's what connects the bony rib to that central sternum. The sternum is something we all know and understand pretty well, but it can be kind of difficult to see it in the tissue here. So I want you to look at it on the skeleton and you can see that there are three distinct aspects to the sternum. You have this upper portion called the manubrium, and then you have this middle longer portion called the body, and then all the way down at the bottom, you have this sharp tip called the xiphoid process. But all three of them are going to fuse together to form what we call the sternum. And then on the back, you have the thoracic vertebrae, and you're gonna have 12 of them. You may have heard of someone say like, T11 or T7 before. That stands for thoracic and then whatever number is associated with it. But what's kind of interesting is you also have 12 ribs. And that's because the 12 ribs connect directly to those 12 thoracic vertebrae. There's also a lot of skeletal muscles on the thorax. And you can actually see two of them right here. This smaller one is called pectoralis minor. And then its big brother just goes right on top of it. This is the pectoralis major muscle. But we're gonna go ahead and save discussing those for a separate video simply because there's so many of them, but they're also really cool and they deserve their own video. So let's go ahead and move these muscles back and we're gonna go ahead and remove the chest plate. Now, as I do that, you can actually see that we've cut the sternum. So you can see inside of that manubrium, but let's go ahead and scoot that out of the way. And you can see here the internal organs inside of the thoracic cavity. And at first glance, it actually seems like this is a pretty simple area, like there's not a lot going on, but that's because there's a ton of hidden anatomy that we're gonna have to do our best Sherlock Holmesing, is what I like to say, in order to discover. But first, I wanna take a look at this muscle down here called the diaphragm. And the diaphragm is a skeletal muscle that's just gonna drape on top of the liver. That's what this massive organ is here. But diaphragm actually means fence or partition. And that's because the diaphragm literally separates the thoracic cavity from that lower abdominal cavity. But it's obviously its main role is going to be with breathing. And speaking of breathing, well, these right here are the lungs. So you have two of them, obviously. You have a right lung and a left lung, but you're also gonna notice if you look pretty closely here, maybe not so closely, that they have these fissures. These separate them into lobes. So the right lung is gonna have three lobes. You can see one right here, another right there, and then this one all the way back here. The lungs are absolutely massive. So three lobes on that right lung, but only two on the left lung. So as I kind of pull this out, you can see one and then two. Although this thing right here is kind of cool. It's called the lingula, literally means little tongue. And the going logic or what we think right now is that this is a evolutionary leftover of an ancient third lobe that the left lung used to have. Then right smack dab in the middle, we have this gigantic superstructure. And I say superstructure because there's a bunch of smaller structures inside of it called the mediastinum. And obviously the thing that's probably gonna catch your eye first that's inside of the mediastinum is the fact that the heart is inside of it. Although it's surrounded in this really cool connective tissue layer called the pericardium, but the heart is gonna be just right here. And then also inside of this mediastinum, we have this thing, it's kind of fun to poke. This is the ascending aorta. This is the largest blood vessel in the human body. And it's gonna, but also behind it is another vessel called the pulmonary trunk. And both the ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk are gonna be sending blood away from the heart. And then you can also see all this yellowy tissue. This is fat, it's called the epicardial fat and it's completely normal, but this is going to reside on top of the heart. Now, 
Normally, there would also be another gland right here called the thymus. The thing is, we had to remove the thymus in order to see what you're looking at here. But the thymus also degenerates and essentially just starts turning to fat as you age. So there really wasn't much to look at. But the thymus did reside on top of or inside of really that thoracic cavity. Then on the side here, you're also going to see very carefully, if you look very carefully, kind of like this bluish vein called the superior vena cava. There's also one underneath it called the inferior vena cava that's really difficult to see that I don't think we're gonna be able to. And both of those are going to take deoxygenated blood from the upper body, the lower body, and bring those towards the heart. There are also several different nerves running through the mediastinum, and we can see one of them right here. I can just get my probe underneath it. This is called the phrenic nerve, and this is gonna go to the diaphragm and control it. So it's essentially responsible for breathing but there are several others going throughout. But there's a couple structures we can't see that are gonna be behind the heart and behind the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. And those are gonna be two tubes called the esophagus and the trachea. The esophagus is your food tube. It's gonna transport food and drink down. Again, this is running behind your heart. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this all that much, but there's this pink organ here doing my best called the stomach. So your esophagus takes food and drink to your stomach. The trachea is your windpipe and that's gonna transport air to and from the lungs. So although the thoracic cavity looks pretty simple at first glance, there are a ton of structures all zipping their way in and out of that thoracic cavity. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can be the first to see the video when it comes out. But thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.